Welcome to Badlands Megastore. I'm Chris. Today we're unboxing the Tipman Commando AEG. All right, the moment we've all been waiting for the unboxing. And, ooh, there it is. All right, so you have your Tipman uh, user guide or manual. The manual here. Uh, you have your mid cap. Uh, they are a 120 round mid cap. Let's see what else we have. Yeah. Oh, nice. So you have a blacked out tip. And of course, your salt and pepper shaker cover for now. All right, let's grab this stuff and move this out of the way. So we do have a blacked out flash hider. Uh, that guy is a negative 14 millimeter thread, so you can replace that guy. All right, let's start from the front. We have a polymer outer barrel. Inside, it is an aluminum inner barrel, and it is a 0.605 uh, diameter, so good size inner barrel or good bore for an inner barrel. Uh, as we move back, you do have a polymer shroud. And when I'm trying to push on this and flex it, this thing is not moving. So this thing is really, really solid. It's a key mod shroud rail. Now I've been taking a look at this and this doesn't look to be real spec key mod. It doesn't have the bevel on the inside. So may have to use something like a M16 rails that you can attach via a screw and a nut. I really, really like the key key mod rail system. So this guy does secure at the back via the two screws and nuts here, and that'll clamp over the, uh, the barrel nut to secure this guy in place. And like I said, I was trying to flex this. There's like no play in this. This For a budget friendly gun, this thing is really, really solid. I'm really impressed, I gotta say. On the top rail here, of course you have your shroud rail that continues on to your upper receiver, and that rail is nice and lined up. It's nice and tight. There's no, uh, no drop or step up. So it's very good if you want to do something like a red dot and a magnifier, that sort of thing. This top rail does have your flip up sights and it's worth mentioning that these guys do lock in place. So I'm just going to show you here. I can't push that down. That's really, really cool. Usually they flip up, flip down without the locking feature. So they've given you something uh, above average as far as sights out of the box. But you do have a flip down aperture there. So you do have some options. That's really, really, really cool for a budget friendly gun. Uh, we have our charging handle. That feels to be, yeah, that's metal. So that guy's metal. As we move back, let's go to the magazine. As I said earlier, 120 round mid cap. So all the BBs will under, be under spring tension. That's great that they give you that out of the box. Usually you get a high cap with the wheel here. Uh, not a bad mag, not what I prefer to use. So these guys, 120 rounds, is gonna be under a full spring tension, which means no winding. And when you're running around, you don't sound like a maraca. So that guy fits in there. And again, the tolerances are nice and tight. There's very little, very little wobble. You have your Tipman stamp here. Uh, you have your fire selector, so of course you have semi and full auto, and I can tell you it does have a really nice click. So the fire selector is going to be uh, set up strictly on the left side, it's not ambidextrous. So as far as metal components, this fire selector is metal, your trigger is metal. Just want to point out this really, really nice grip, so it has a really nice plump ergonomic pistol grip. It's uh, very nice actually to handle. I know people have different preferences. I'm sure you can swap it out later if you don't like that style or even, I don't know, if you don't like that uh, finger groove there, I'm sure you can dremel it out and do some mods. As we move back, we have a metal sling mount. Uh, that's about the only ambidextrous thing we have in the receiver area. So you can mount your sling left uh, for lefties and righties. And buffer tube, buffer tube's metal, that's good. More metal is always better, it's extra durable. You have a five position stock, crane stock. So this crane stock, uh, as you can see, it's a little wider there. That's gonna allow for uh, nine, six nunchucks so that you can fit them down the side. Uh, of course, you can use a 7.4 LiPo or a nine, six with this guy. Uh, there's currently no MOSFET in it, but if you were to put one in there, then you're gonna be able to use an 11.1 .1 volt uh, very reliably. On the right side of the gun here, just gonna point this out. You can see, obviously, this is how you access your hop-up. It is a rotary style hop-up. You can see that it's a metal gearbox there. So uh, the metal gearbox, ultra reliable. It's a version two as well. So if you want to do your modifications, you just need version two parts. And you have your, what looks to be a uh, polymer hop-up unit with the rotary style wheel. So that's gonna be very effective. Uh, it's probably the most common hop-up uh, adjustment or hop-up unit you see out there now. Uh, so that's great that they're using that. 
On the back, you have your usual release plate here for the battery. So you just push these two prongs in. That will allow you to access that guy. And now I can put my 9.6 nunchucks down the side there. Since we've got it open, let's pop a nunchuck in there and see how she fires. All right, whenever you hook up an AEG, make sure you are in safe because once you hook that battery in, you don't have to cock it or anything like that. It is live. We're gonna make sure the gun is in a safe mode and we'll hook up the battery. All right, guys, here we go. We have our 9.6 nunchuck in there. Let's start off with semi, do a few shots. It has good trigger response for a budget-friendly gun. When it cycles, it has a really nice thump to it. And with the polymer, it's super light. I'm really impressed. Let's try the full auto. It works well in semi, it works well in full auto. There's not a lot of play in the body, if any. If you want to get your hands on this gun, you can check it out at badlandspaintball.com or go to your nearest location. And as always, I'm Chris. I'll see you on the field.